what, what the haters talking about. What's up, family? Sad day in the music industry. The lead singer of Linkin Park, Chester Benetton, was found dead in his Los Angeles area home. He was 41 years old. Police suspect that it was suicide. And what's very strange is that he died on what would have been his friend's Carnell, uh, uh, Chris Carnell's 53rd birthday. Chris Carnell was the front man for Soundgarden. He was found hung back in May of this year. And so these guys join a long list of untimely deaths in the music industry and entertainment industry overall. I don't think that we take mental health seriously enough in America. And it is the root of so much of our problems. Chester Bennington's problems are well documented. He was always speaking about this stuff in his songs. If you listen to his music, he had that raw, gritty type sound, and, and you could feel it when he would sing. You know, you, you could feel it every time he'd do his thing. You could feel every word that he was saying. And he often talked about the abuse that he suffered at the hands of his father. So he had a long history of this. A lot of people think that this is something that you can just control. You can choose to be well. You can just choose to be happy. But it's not that simple for severe cases. For mild cases, maybe, but not these severe cases. Now, I don't want to get too political, but I do want to remind you guys that it was John F. Kennedy and the Democrats who started the decline of mental health awareness with their Community Mental Health Act back in 1963. See, once they did that, they moved mental health back into the community to where there was little oversight and you couldn't verify uh, whether someone was getting the treatment or the medication that they needed. So it left it wide open and it left uh, people with mental health issues exposed. And although the Kennedy administration and the Democrats got the ball rolling and basically uh, killed uh, the progress that America was making in mental health, it was Ronald Reagan and the Republicans who put the nail in the coffin. So it's enough blame to go around here, but I don't think we should focus on blame. I just wanted to put that out there and just put people on notice that this is a, a, a major problem. A lot of people just look at people that's doing stuff out here in the world and they see all this crazy madness going on and they say, man, it's just messed up. This is how it is. Many of these people have serious mental issues, mental health issues that has been going unchecked for a long time. And then it appears that they're just going crazy, but this is a combination of years of pain, years of, tra tra uh, of trauma. And all of this can, most of this can be traced back to childhood. Most all of it can be traced back to childhood. I had a problem myself at one point. And by the grace of God, I got through it. Many people ain't going to be able to get through it on their own. 
They're just not going to be able to catch that snap on their own. Most people are going to need some kind of help. You cannot, for many people who have these severe cases of mental health issues, they can't just choose to be happy. They need help. So, with that in mind, I thought it might be a good idea to give you guys some points on what you could do for your mental health. So, here's my 10 things that you can do for your mental health. Number one, value yourself. Treat yourself with kindness and respect. Avoid self-criticism. See, oftentimes when something is not going right in our life, we're harder on ourselves than anybody else. I spoke with a woman who had a baby, had two babies when she was a teenager. And she's in her 40s now. And she is still haunted by the fact that she was a teen mother. Even though she picked up the pieces and she did the best that she could and she loved her children, she's a loving mother, she's still haunted by what other people's perception of her is, what she thinks they think of her. That's a huge problem. And it's all in her head. So think highly of yourself. Even if somebody else is actually verbalizing that you're nothing. Even if they're on the internet calling you everything but a child of God. Know that you're important. Put value in yourself first. And when you do that, once you value yourself first... Man, when people shun you, when people try to stab you in the back, they do you dirty, they don't want to mess with you no more, they stop answering your phone calls, at that point, you can be like me. And I'd be like, well, it's their loss because I know I'm a good person. I see Carmen just joined us. Carmen works uh, with mental, uh, uh, in the mental health uh, 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 arena. And she does a whole lot of good work with uh, Live Beautiful Now. I actually was trying to find Live Beautiful Now on, uh, on, on the Facebook list of, uh, of uh, charities, but I couldn't find it. So I think I picked the next best one. So Carmen, we got to have that discussion. So we need to get you out on that. So next time I do something like this, uh, you guys get those donations. Make sure y'all click on that donation button at the bottom of the screen. I believe it's at the bottom of your screen. And it is uh, to make a donation to Mental Health of America, uh, Mental Health America, uh, Mental Health America of Greater Houston. Make sure y'all click on that. Uh, they need your donations. Uh, the second thing that you can do, take care of your body. That means that... Uh, Eating right, exercise, it can improve the quality of your life. It can improve the way you think. You know, a lot of times uh, when you eat bad, you feel bad. You ever notice how when you just eat something bad, something you just feel bad? But when you eat something good, you don't even feel full, but you feel satisfied and you have much more energy. So just eating right, just eating clean and Exercising can go a long way in your mental health. Number three, surround yourself with good people. This is very, very important. People with strong family and social connections are usually healthier people. This goes back to the, the having a support group. This is very, very important the type of people that you surround yourself with. If you're around negative people, you're probably going to have negative, a lot of negative experiences. You ever notice how you have that friend or family member that no matter 
how great you feel when you come into them, uh, when you come into, um, uh, when you have an interaction with them, they just bring you down. And sometimes, man, it don't matter how much you love somebody, you cannot allow them to steal your joy. You can't allow them to deplete your energy. They have so much negative energy, they just transfer that negative energy to you and they dump their problems off on you. You have to get from around these type of people. You can love these people, but if you want to talk to that type of person on the phone because you love them and you want to just do a welfare check on them from time to time, call them and make the conversation Brief. Be as brief as possible. Hey, how you doing? Ha ha ha. Do do do. You know? Okay, so uh, Carmen is saying that uh, the suicide prevention walk is in November. Can't wait, for sure. So, get these people off the phone, or out of, get out of the presence of these type of people as soon as possible. They will bring you down there. They are experts at bringing people down. Uh, so that's all they know. You ask them how they're doing. Oh, God, you know, oh, my back hurting. They turned off the lights. They, these kids. Oh, my neighbor, she come over here talking that trash and just, just negative, negative, negative. And I'm telling you, I'm telling you, no matter how positive you are, it will wear you down. If you want to talk to them, if you just can't help yourself, make it brief or call them. In fact, call them when you know that you're getting ready to walk into a meeting or something. You know, you know you've got to cut the conversation short. Or call them when you're falling asleep, something like that. And just say, okay, all right, bye. <laughs> you know? All right, so number four, Give yourself. This is a good one. When my mom died, I was very depressed. And I started to volunteer more. I was already doing volunteer work and giving of myself. But when my mom died, that is the, at the point in my life where I realized my life was bigger than my own. So... I started giving up myself more. And in return, it made me happier. I, I like the idea of having a purpose and being a purpose to someone else. People looking forward to me uh, being around, me helping out, and seeing the smiles on their faces, seeing the joy in their eyes made me happier. So give of yourself. Number five, learn how to deal with stress. Practice good coping skills. Now, for that, you can try one-minute stress strategies. You can try to exercise, take a walk, rub your kitten, you know, anything. But just Learn how to deal with stress by having good coping skills. If you think these things through, so when things happen in your life, you automatically know, okay, I know how to deal with this because I'm already, you know, you know how you got to practice. Everything takes practice. Everything. If you want to really get good at something, you have to practice. You can practice on having good coping skills. Just like you've managed to practice on not having good coping skills. It's all habit. It's habit. You do it enough and then it becomes a reality. So learn how to have good coping skills. All right? Quiet your mind. Meditating. Mindfulness. Prayer. Closing your eyes and just being, sit, and just do nothing. That works. Um, 
Set realistic goals. This is a this is a big one because many people don't get it because they set their goals too high. And and this is what I mean. If you want to decide to do something on a professional level, academic level, on a personal level, you have to set realistic goals and you can set you need to set lofty goals and also small goals. And what I mean by this, most of us have the big goals and we say, well, I want to have a I want to live in a big house. I want to drive a big car. And I want to have, you know, a big wedding. And, you know, I want to be have, I want to have a million dollars. And I want to be a famous lawyer. I want to be a great doctor. I want to be a, a great entrepreneur. Well, these are certainly goals that are obtainable. They are, they are attainable, but they take a little time. You have to you have to massage you have to massage these goals. Try setting small goals along the way. This is what I do all the time. Here's a small goal. I want to make uh, I want to put out three videos today uh, on Facebook. I put out two videos. Well, I didn't get the three, but man, I got really close. That was good. Or I got the three. And okay, I did pretty good. I reward myself and I say that was good. Or I'm trying to uh, make it to where I'm going. I'm trying to get somewhere. And uh, I know I'm running a little late. And as I'm driving, the lights are all synchronized green. And I'm just moving along. And that's a little small goal. You know, I'm getting there. And then when I get there, I get there on time. Like, ooh, all right, Dan, I got there on time. Small goals along the way. This way, you have several times throughout the day where you're happy, where you're satisfied, where you have some sense of accomplishment. As opposed to just waiting on that big goal. Because if you're just waiting on the big goals, then you're going to be waiting a long time and you're going to have a lot of bad days. So set small goals in the interim. All right? So number eight, break up the monotony. A little change in the schedule. This works wonders. This is why... People take vacations, but if you can't afford to take a vacation, how about doing something as simple as taking a different route home from work? Visiting a different park, a park you've never been to. How about something that I do from time to time? I will be driving down the street and I will see a crowd going into a a building or a stadium or an arena and I'll stop and buy a ticket and just walk in and see what's going on. <laughs> I've done this so many times. I mean, I go to like places you would never imagine. I went into places where I was the only black person in there and everybody going like, you know, looking around like, who is he with? And I'm just sitting there. And I may not even understand the language that they're speaking. But I'm just sitting there going like, and I'll sit. I may sit there for 15 minutes, maybe 30, maybe an hour. But I'll sit and I'll experience something different that I've never experienced before. So breaking the monotony works. If you... Uh, used to, let's say, you go to the same club all the time. If you like to go out, but you go to the same club every week, week in, week out, the same clubs. 
get outside your comfort zone and go to a different night spot. Go somewhere where it's a different crowd, where you can get outside of your crowd. Now, you want to make sure, you know, things are kind of crazy in America these days, so you definitely want to make sure you know where you're going. You know where you're at. But, you know, try to go to a different place. Go, go to different places. Get around different people. Be around, experience different cultures. Open your mind. Live your life to the fullest. Don't be painting yourself into a corner. Don't put yourself in a box. Get outside and do something different. Watch a different television program. If all you're sitting there watching is A&E or the ID channel, and trust you me, I've had my fair share of those channels. Turn on the, turn on Animal Planet or turn on PBS. They got some great programming. Turn on, you know, watch, instead of just watching CNN or MSNBC, watch a channel like Azuri, you know, watch a foreign news network, watch a foreign channel, and you may learn something. There's a lot of foreign shows that have been on television that have been adapted uh, by what have that 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 Americans have uh, taken and made their own. A lot of these shows that you see in America came from Britain, came from Europe. So it came from other countries. They're adaptations. So get outside of your comfort zone and break the monotony. Number nine. Now this is a tough one for a lot of people, but it's doable. It's all mind over matter. Avoid alcohol and drugs. See, what you want to do, I know that a lot of people use alcohol to, to socialize and you know, loosen up to socialize. And in moderation, alcohol is very, very is harmless. If you can avoid it altogether, do so. I haven't been able to do so yet myself. <laughs> But I do drink alcohol in moderation. And I, I, I can go months without drinking alcohol and not feel anything. But oftentimes people use alcohol and drugs to self-medicate. And what happens is that it usually exacerbates the, the situation. Uh, it, it, it usually... Uh, you know, it usually uh, exacer exacerbates the situation. It doesn't help the situation. So, if you can avoid that, please do so. Number 10. Get help when you need it. And that's it. When you need help, get help. The thing is that for a lot of us, we view getting help as a sign of weakness. When you're in need and you need help, asking for help is a sign of strength. I learned this when I was a teenager, and some of us still don't get it. I was one of those kids when I was in class, if I didn't understand something, I put my hand up real quick. I'd be like, hey, you know, uh, uh, please explain this to me. Because I, I think my whole thing is I don't want to be a dummy. I don't want to be a fool. And I think it's that old saying, a closed mouth can't get fed. If I don't open my mouth, I can't eat. So... I'm eating when I get this information. I need to go to this teacher. Because if I sit there and just don't understand and I just make an F because I'm trying to be cool, 
I'm going to look like a fool in school because I'm trying to be cool. Come on, man. Nah. If I need help, I'm asking for help. Now, we all have a sense of pride. And I'm not saying begging. It's two different things now. I'm talking about asking for help when you truly need help. When you have exhausted uh, all of your own uh, tools to, to help yourself. And then you say, okay, I need some help. I need help. Okay, you reach out for help and you get the help that you need. And it's important to remember that treatment is effective. If you don't, if you need help, if you, if you have mental health issues and you need some help and you don't get it, you're almost certainly likely to have a bad outcome. Almost guaranteed. But if you get help, help is effective. Now, not every single person is going to be able to be saved. Some people, they're just not going to get it. That's what happened with Chester Benetton. That's what happened with uh, Chris. They, they didn't want to be here. If somebody just don't want to be here, then that's nothing you can do. But most people I do believe would like to live as long as they can, but they want to live pain-free. They want to live in a healthy society. They want to live in a healthy body. And, you know, they're just screaming out. They, they're acting out. A lot of times people act out, and they want the help, but they're too proud to ask for the help. They're too proud to admit it. So, these are some of the things that you can do to, to help your mental health. Hopefully, I've given you guys some, some information that you can use. I've given you some news that you can use. And whether it's for yourself or somebody else, if you uh, need any more help, hey, my friend, uh, Carmen, is is on there y'all follow this uh link uh carmen is on there somewhere and just follow her and uh she does a lot of good work in the community uh in houston and it doesn't matter if you're in houston you can be anywhere and she can help you she can direct you to uh somebody or you can just google uh mental health uh assistance and there is a plethora of organizations out there that can give you the help you need all right no more talk. What, what the ladies talking about? Yeah. Order, Texas.